Hello on the blood fives and today I'm here to bring you my July 3 in 1. So the topic for July's 3 in 1 is books that you would like to see adapted into film or TV. I don't know why I didn't say movies or TV shows but it's <laughs> the or. And my first two books were easy but in my last, my last pick I was just like ugh. I had like a, a draw so then I had to pick like my top, my top top out of those out of those two. So if you don't know the monthly 3 in 1 series which I haven't done I think since November is part of booktube is from around the world which is a group created by Sherry from Sherry Walker on Goodreads and you guys are all welcome to join but it's basically every month we vote on the topic to we vote on the topic we have like three or four options and you pick three choices for that one topic three and one so yeah this might um i guess y'all should be able to guess at least one of mine because i talk about this book all the time but the first thing and i've also said i want to see this in a movie this would make an awesome movie if somebody like stan lee produced it or just somebody from the marvel world produced it this would be directed and everything this would be the, the shit like it would be perfect Okay, so the first book that I'm going to talk about that I, like my top that I want to see turn into a movie is Red Queen by Victoria Avion. I love this series so much. I haven't read War Storm yet. I have it. It's on my shelf. I just haven't picked it up to read yet. And I just, I would love to see this as a movie. And I always tell people when they ask me what it's about, I say it's X-Men on crack. Because that's just about what it is. It's X-Men on crack. I love this book so much. There are other people out there that don't love it as much as me, but hey, everybody has their own opinion. But I love this so much. This would be such an awesome action, like, superhero-ish movie. And if you don't know, Red Queen is about this world that is separated by blood. You have the Silver Bloods, which are the elite, and you have the Red Bloods, which are supposed to just be, you know, your normal commoners. You know, people like that. They won't call them slaves, but slaves. Um... And we follow Mare, which is, she's the shit, like, ah, she's the shit. But we follow Mare, and Mare is a red blood who, she's uh, worked her whole life, like, pretty much pickpocketing people. She wasn't that great in school, and she didn't really care. She just wanted to provide for her family as best as she could. She had three older brothers that all got conscripted to go to the army, and that's what the reds are for, pretty much. Once you hit, I think... 16 or 17 that's conscription age and nine times out of ten you're going to get sent a letter telling you you have to go to war and if you don't have a, a job you're going to war and that's basically what she was waiting for she just figured well you know i'm about to be that age and you know i don't have a, a an apprentice I, I, I don't have an apprentice job anywhere with anyone so i'm pretty much she's pretty much sealing her fate and seeing her future and one day she's gonna get a job at the palace and all hell breaks loose and Mare finds out that she has powers and as a red blood you're not supposed to have any powers so you know that like really fucked up people's head and of course the people in the palace like the king and the queen you know tried to put on this front like no she's not a red blood she's a silver she's a long lost princess bullshit just so people won't go crazy meanwhile they were kind of keeping her kind of prisoner in the palace because they didn't want people to know that hey she's a red blood and long story short a revolution is going to happen in this book it starts in this book and it is the oh god it's fucking awesome like i really don't know how to describe this book other than to say that it's x-men on crack that's really what it is it's a really amazing. I'm terrible at explaining what this book is about every time somebody asks me because I love it so much. It's just my thoughts go everywhere. Like I, I break it down so much where I don't need to break it down that much. But I would love to see this as a movie. Then the next book that I have, I talk about this book a lot too. This is one of my favorites. I'm pretty sure I've said this would make a good movie. I know for sure I said this would make a very good game if they were to make it into a game. But that is an Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This would be an amazing movie. I've just seen this be like this very, you know, Roman Empire-ish, you know, war zone, you know, uh, magical shit going on kind of movie. I This would be like an ultimate fantasy movie. Like, I would really sit here and enjoy this movie. Like, I could really see this being the shit. So, if one year we could get Red Queen and, and Ember in the Ashes to, you know, 
come out as a movie the same year. That's the best year for movies, if you ask me. So if you don't know, Ember and Ashes is set back in like, I guess like a Roman Empire-ish world. Yeah, we gonna just say it's like a Roman Empire-ish world. We follow this, we follow two characters. We follow Laya and Elias. Laya is a scholar girl and in this world, scholars are basically slaves and they're, you know, they're not up on a hierarchy whatsoever. And we start off with um, her how her grandparents' house getting ramshacked, and her brother is taken away to jail. She gets away, but then she's uh, she's taken in by the resistance, and there they said they will keep her safe and rescue her brother if she will go undercover as a slave into the Martial Empire to try to you know jumpstart this revolution that they're trying to have, and so they can have a person on the inside. Then we meet Elias, who is a mask in the Martial Empire. Um, they are pretty, and he's like, he's a Ventura, which that name is like really big and holds a lot of power in this book. So he's like up high on the ranks and people see him as being like the next emperor. You know, he's like that high up and gosh, he is really fictional boyfriend worthy, should I say? Yes, very much. And him and his life he hates being a mask he hates it like he hates you know what he has to stand for he doesn't enjoy it like all the other masks do he doesn't want to be there he actually plans on running away and then he meets Alaya and they end up being together like I, like I said together like that but they end up making a friendship and he ends up wanting to help her to save her brother and I really enjoyed this. Like it, she really made him second guess his choices and really made him think about, you know, uh, what he's doing with his life and who's he standing for, what, who's he's helping. And oh my God, it's just so many twists and turns through this novel. I haven't read the third one yet. I have it. A read at the gates. I haven't read it yet though. It's on my shelf. I just haven't picked it up yet. And I don't know when I'm gonna do that. But that would be awesome to do War Storm and a read at the gates at the same month. Like just read them back to back. Oh, oh god. But this would be such a great movie. Like, I could see this being, like, a, a, a wonderful action movie. Like, just a lot of just slaughtering and killing going on. It'll be the best. And then, like I said, my third choice was really mixed. I didn't know which one to go with. Um, I'm looking at my shelf. I'm like, what other book would make a good movie? And it's either between Cinder by Marissa Meyer or Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rosh. I did pick one. And I was sitting here like, um, I'm not sure which one. Because I do like A Snow Like Ashes. I really like this series. I haven't read the last book for this either. And it's been sitting on my shelf since it came out. And I have not read it yet. But Snow Like Ashes will make a really good, you know, action, kingdom saving movie. But then at the same time, I loved Cinder so much. I haven't read the whole series for Cinder. I have the second book on my shelf, which I think is Scarlet. Yeah, it's Scarlet, and I haven't read that yet. But I love Cinder so much that I didn't think I was going to love Cinder. And I devoured this book. This would be the ultimate fairy tale retelling movie franchise series. Like a four movie. Is it four books or is it five books? But I think a movie for each book, this would be like a wonderful series to like have. It's like almost binge watching Twilight. This has nothing to do with vampires, nothing to do with Twilight. But I'm just saying, binge watching all the Twilight movies is like a high for me. So to have movies made of these books and to binge watch them would be a new high and like a new level for me. So, when it came down to Push and Shove, I did choose Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Because although I really did like Snow Like Ashes, I liked Cinder more than I liked the Snow Like Ashes series. Does that make sense? Like, I haven't read the third book. I really enjoyed the first book. The second book, uh, what is it? Frost, uh, Frost Like Night or Frost, something like that, whatever. The second book I didn't like as much as I liked the first book. And I'm scared the third book is going to just be like, blah. Like, I feel like I'm going to have... When I read the Match Trilogy, the first book was great, the second book was eh, and the third book I was just like, Ugh. so I just, I don't want it to get worse, I just want it to be really good. Like there's potential in how the second book ended to the third book, but I just, movie wise, I would rather see a Cinder movie over a Snow Like Ashes movie. And then on top of that, I feel like if Snow Like Ashes was to be turned into a movie, I feel like it would be very, very much, uh, <sighs> like almost kind of like a, a old, old, like, Game of Thrones kind of movie like not say like I never seen Game of Thrones but I'm saying like very like old set kind of like Viking days kind of stuff I feel like it would be that's like the setting I would get from from reading this like I would feel like that's how they would make it in a movie and I just feel like 
The movie for Cinder would be better than the movie for Snow Like Ashes. Oh my god, Sarah Rush. I love you though. Like, I really do <laughs> enjoy the series, but movie-wise, people, come on. I would rather see a Cinder movie than a Snow Like Ashes movie. Sorry. So, people, that is my three-in-one for this month and i ha really have not done one i think since november when i was looking through my videos like wow it's been a while since i did a three in one video and i always vote on a topic and i just never do the video so i'm proud to present to you my three picks for books i like to see in the movie personally i wouldn't want to see any book turned into a tv show i just feel like because say we're talking about cinder okay say it's just one book it wasn't a whole series how can you make that into a TV series and get past one season? Then that means you're going to be adding a bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with the book. And this stuff is good. And not that that's a bad thing because sometimes that's really good. But then that means you're going to go away from the plot that the book is following because you're adding your new stuff in to make it last longer. And then it has a bigger chance of being a failure than being a success to just make it in a movie. So, yeah. I just wouldn't turn a book into a TV show. Uh... I've heard the Shadow Hunters series did not do too well as a TV show. I would rather see that as a movie than a TV show. But anyway, thank you guys for watching my video. I would like to know what you guys would pick for this 3 one topic. If you make a video, link it below so I can check it out or even a blog. So I can see what you your thoughts are. What books would you guys make into a movie or a TV show? And how do you feel about books being made into TV shows over books being made into movies? And do you think that that's a good idea to make it into a TV show over making it into a movie? Because I think that's... I don't... Eh. But anyway... <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.